Let's start the party. From hottest topics in the news to one-on-one -on -one interviews and all the hit tunes you want to hear, this is what's hot. It is What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my special guest, Ken LaVinci, in the building. What's going on, Kendall? How you doing? What's goody? What's good? I'm feeling good. I, uh, that's good. That's good. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. We are live. We are on the radio coast to coast. It might be cold outside, but we're keeping it hot here on the radio. Um, on today's show, we got you covered, as always, with the hot headlines, the hot report. And on today's show, we have... Uh, Mr. De Kendrick Murray, he's the exec executive director of student success um, and uh, access here at NCCU. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, but uh, first, we're going to start the show as we do every show with some positivity given by giving somebody the credit they deserve for being great in the segment called the Hot Spotlight. But first, Kendall, how are you? Thank you so much for coming back. I, I love to hear you. you got your hair done for the show. I like it. How you Thank doing? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing really good. I feel so good today. Good, 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 good. All how right. are you doing, Shema? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. I'm tired. Mm. I am exhausted, but I'm here. Um, but we're going to start the show with some positivity on the other side of this song. It's Made For Me, Money Long, right here on NCC All You Net. It's What's Up with Shemai Cook. I'm Shemai Cook. I got That was Money Long. Uh, made for me. That's a big hit on TikTok, especially on TikTok. Uh, and Money Long actually, she she performed that song for Homecoming, I believe. But it's a good hit, right, uh, Kendall? Kendall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's start the show off with some positivity, as we do every show with the uh, the hot spotlight. Um, so I'm gonna today. I'm gonna give the hot spotlight to. Miss Kimberly Pierce Cartwright. She is the WNCU. She, uh, you know, Audio Net, uh, where the, sh the show is, um, you know, where the studio is. Uh, we are, she's the news director of our parent, our parent company, um, WNCU. Um, and she's retiring after 22 years uh, next month in February. And I want to give her her flowers. She uh, has helped me. Um, and other students here at, um, at NCCU um, to be prepared for this radio business. Um, and I wish her very, very happy retirement. Uh, she's been in this radio business for, like I said, over two decades. And now she's going to go into retirement and focus on her art, being a full-time artist. And good for her and uh, major props. And she deserves all the, all the praise that uh, she uh, has coming her way now that was my hot spotlight who are you gonna give your hot spotlight kendall um today i'm gonna give my hot spotlight to nadia jamal she's a hairstylist here on central's campus she's been doing her thing lately she's been getting everybody right so y'all go follow her if y'all want braids or retwists or anything like that so. okay okay major problem we love a, a black entrepreneur yes. and black woman uh, doing business and stuff. That's a good hustle. Now, if you want to give somebody the the, uh, the credit they deserve for being great in the hot spotlight, give us a call. 919-579-2444 is the number. Up next is the hot report. I mean, the hot headlines. We're going to talk about Spellman getting the largest donation in HBCU history wow. and much, much more. It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook. It's What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. That's a hit. That was a, that was a Nicki Minaj, Everybody, featuring a Lil Uzi Burt right here. Shout out to the Burps. Yeah, the, well, yeah, they're, they're okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the high headlines. Here we go. The news. I got news. Here we go. All right. We're going to go there. Well, it is What's Hot so, with Shamai Cook, so we go there all the time. Okay. These are the stories heating up in the news. Someone is not doing their job correctly because this is this is blasphemous. I'm sorry. This is hot headlines. Yeah. Allegedly. Okay. On what's hot? All right, let's get into these high headlines. Let's start off with some football. So this, over the weekend, if you if you were li living under a rock, uh, it, for the, uh, the weekend it was the the divisional rounds of the NFL playoffs for the AFC, the Ravens, uh, 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 Ken Lavinci's Shout Ravens, out Baltimore, yeah, Baltimore. Uh, they won <laughs> <laughs> they beat the Texans. Uh, the Chiefs beat the Bills, uh, which means the Chiefs will play the Ravens in the AFC um, Championship game on Sunday at 3 o'clock on CBS. Now for the NFC, the Lions beat the Bucks 
in the M. The 49ers beat the Packers, which means the Lions will play the 49ers in the NFC Championship game on Fox at 630. Uh, Tuning in. What's your predictions? I don't have any. You don't have any? Well, Baltimore all the way, though. Baltimore all the way. I don't okay. even watch football. I just know go Ravens. Gotcha. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's get to these other. Uh, so, recently, Spellman uh, recently received the biggest donation of a HBCU in history. According to um, Eleven Alive, the school uh, revealed that one of their uh, chairmen. Uh, a couple, a businessman and a, a businesswoman, donated one hundred million dollars. Wow! That is the record of the most, uh, the highest donation in HBCU history. Major props, you know, because HBCUs are very underfunded. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Spelman, it's an all women's college. So it's in Atlanta, um, and, and, it, and it's good because I feel like. You should invest in young women first because women get stuff done. Pretty. Women get stuff done. That's number one. But I, I love that. You know, hopefully this is this, this starts a trend, and um, you know, people donating to HBCUs, mm-hmm. um, and hopefully that lowers down tuition, which it probably wouldn't, but yeah. lower down, you know, tuition costs because Spelman is a private institution, so that's mm-hmm. why it's it's very expensive, but it's one of the top. Schools in the country is the number one. I think it's been the number one HBCU in the country. I think for over six years in a row. Mm-hmm. If I not, don't quote me on that. But I know it's been very consecutive. So major props to uh, Spellman and yeah. you know f- to those people who donated the largest HBCU Congrats donation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see you going to Spellman. I can see see you being a Spellman girl. It was on my list. Oh, it was you apply? Did you get in? I didn't apply. Oh, you didn't apply, mm-hmm. but it was on your list. Okay. Um. That's uh, that's another news. Uh, that's send our condolences to Martin Luther uh, the King family. Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, youngest son, Dexter Scott, uh, passed away at the age of 62 uh, due to his long battle with uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, yeah, may, yeah, may he rest in peace. Uh, yeah, he was 62 years old. He died in his home. Um, so sending healing hail- energy to the um, Scott. King family um, and Ron DeSantis dropped out of the presidential race the for Florida governor Ron DeSantis uh, has suspended his Republican campaign uh, due to uh, him basically being obliterated by Trump so mm. so he just and he uh, publicly after he announced that his he's uh, canceling his campaign he Endorse uh, for President Donald Trump. So, and that was the hot re- uh, hot headlines. What's coming up in the hot report, Courtney, um, Kendall? Today in the hot report, we have Nick Cannon. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, he says he has no plans yet to have a 13th child. Allegedly, allegedly, we, we, we see that Nick Cannon trying to take over the world with his family and his children, yeah. but that's all. We'll talk about that more in the mm-hmm. hot report. It's what's hot with Shamai Cook. It's what's up with Shamai Cook. I'm Shamai Cook. We're having a little fun back here and behind the scenes talk about these topics. Speaking of topics, let's get into the topic. But first of all, how you doing, Co- Kendall? How you doing? I'm, I'm here doing with Ken Vinci. Really, really great today. How are you doing, Shamai? I'm I'm tired, but I'm here. All right. Amen. Amen. It's time to get into the top report. Here we go. Hey Kendall, how you doing? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I am Ken LaVinci, okay? From pop culture to all the news at NCCU, this is the Hot Report. High heels on my tippies. Do say in Gabbana, that's on my tippies. I feel like this is going to stir some stuff up in the pot. On what's hot? It's only entertainment. Did you like your intro? I love my intro. <laughs> Shout out to the bar. <laughs> All right, let's get into the hot report. What we got in the hot report, uh, Kendall? Okay, y'all. Today we have Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon says that he's not ready and he doesn't have any plans on having his 13th child. After celebrating the holidays with his 12 children, at least that's what he told People Magazine recently. During the sit-down, Cannon joked about people encouraging him to have, quote-unquote, more kids. However, the multi-linked talent made it clear that he's chilling right now. 
Mm, allegedly, we'll see. I, I I I feel like Nick Cannon likes to start a ar- wants to start an army. Him and Country Wayne, <laughs> they want to start an army and take over the world with all their children. Because their children is going to have children, and children, exactly. children. So this going this going to be everybody's all everybody's going to be a Cannon. Yeah, everybody or a Wayne, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. I I I'm telling you about the it probably I'll give it probably around April or May. He will have another child on the way. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna call it because it's like a typical news cycle in pop culture. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right, what's up? What's else? Is Coleman for confirms it? that he's dating Jennifer Hudson while on her talk show. The confirmation, the confirmation is finally in. After months of speculations from fans, Coleman has seemingly confirmed he and Jennifer Hudson are dating. Coleman shared the life update during his guest appearance on the Hudson show, and fans learned Coleman and Jay Hood are off the market through a teaser clip on social media. All right, here we go. Now we gotta get down to business, Mr. Common. Mm-hmm. I'm a host, and so I have to ask you this question, because everybody always wanna know this. Are you dating anyone? Yes, and I'm in a relationship that is one of the most beautiful people I ever met in life. She's, she's smart, she loves God, she has something real down to earth about her. Um, she's talented, but, but I, set, I set my standard kinda high, because she had to have an E-God, she, <laughs> she, 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 she had to win an Oscar on her first movie. I said my standard house. She had to get her own talk show. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson's reaction is a little too much for me. It's a little extra. <laughs> but I think I feel like that they're a perfect, they're a nice couple. You know, he doesn't have any children. She has a son. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, this is this is good. This is, I love black love. Uh, I love Jennifer Hudson. Yeah, me too. I love yeah. her as a singer, not as a talk show host. I think she's just very extra as a talk show host. But who who's to say? But she's a great singer, like yeah, he said, E got sure. actress, a icon. But Props to them, major love to them. What else we got in the high report? We have Fat Joe. He wants credit for reuniting Ashanti and Nelly. While talking to his Instagram Live on Saturday, January 20th, the Bronx rapper was speaking on Ashanti and Nelly's romantic reunion and claimed that if it wasn't for him and Ja Rule's hit for hit battle back in September 2021, the two lovebirds might not have reunited officially as of September 2023. Ashanti and Nelly, they look so happily ever after. So the other day, Ashanti FaceTimed me with Nelly. And they were like, hey, bro, this, this, that. And you remember they had the rumor she was pregnant. It was just a rumor. And I, to- I immediately told them I need 10% of this kid. Because if it wasn't for verses that I brought Nelly out, me against Ja Rule, that's when they saw each other and that energy connected again. That's when he said, I got to have her. Now, he was over there contemplating. He really want to go over there. But he was contemplating, and my brother Mayor was like, yo, bro, what the f*** you waiting for? So he goes over there, and that starts the conversation. Uh, well, listen, Nelly and uh, Ashanti are my favorite black couple in, in, in culture, black Aww. culture. And it's, it's one of, and besides Jay-Z and Beyonce, they're always, they're always up there. But mm-hmm. I like the reunite. I like, spin, I like the story of the whole spinning the block. I like that yes. whole. I, I love that because that's a spin I approve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. No. Yeah. Uh, if Fat Joe wants to get ten percent of the child, I, I believe that's fair. <laughs> if, if she's pregnant, because it hasn't been official, or it hasn't been you okay. know confirmed if she was really pregnant or not. Um, but it is kind of weird because I have not seen her publicly uh, since um, that announcement. You know. But I digress. Um, who else? What's also in the hot report? We also have artist The Weeknd. He is the first artist to surpass 115 monthly listeners on Spotify. Major props to The Weeknd. Me and Kendall were just talking about how we love The Weeknd. Yeah, I, I think he's one of the very underrated artists. Mm-hmm. I think he doesn't get uh, as much praise as he deserves when yes. it comes to his artiste and how he makes his music. So I definitely uh, we love The Weeknd here. And uh, that was the hot report um good job kendall thank you thank you so much all right um we'll be right back uh coming up at the top of the hour we got you covered with the hot mix of the day and uh later in the second hour we got mr uh the kendrick murray of the student accessibility services here at nccu what's up with your mic up you're listening to what's hot on nccu audience 
It is what's up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my guest co-host Ken Lavinci in here with me. How you doing, Kendall? I'm good. I'm good. That, that's good. That's good. And we got a special, special guest today on the show. He is the exec, uh, executive director of Student Access and Success. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen. It's the one and only Mr. DeKendrick Murray. How you doing, Mr. Murray? Doing pretty good, pretty good. Thank you guys for having me today. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, appreciate your time. I was trying to have you on last semester. Yes. Uh, but, we, you know, <laughs> schedules are crazy, and um, I'm, I'm glad that you are here for this semester. Um, yes, yes, I greatly yes. appreciate your time. Let's start off this. So, um, as the executive director of Student Access and Success, uh, you ensure access uh, for students who have physical and um, uh, mental disabilities. What made you want to uh, have a career uh, in higher ed where it, uh, you helped you help non-tradition students? What made you want to have a, a career like this in higher ed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little bit of backstory. Again, my name is DeKendrick Murray. I serve as the executive director for Student Access and Success. Yeah. From a small city called Quincy, Florida, about this big, wow. uh, all of 7,000 people. Uh, mom raised me, two sisters, three cousins, three bedroom trailer, $28,000. Um, wow. So, uh, I come from, uh, like I said, limited income background, but also first generation college student. Uh, one of the fun facts is that me and my mom were actually in college at the same time. Wow. And so that was like a really cool experience for us. Um, and so uh, me, when I was in high school, actually in middle school, too, I was a part of TRIO programs. Okay. So I participated in TRIO programs then. Got uh, they ended up helping me get into the University of Florida, got a full ride scholarship for my undergrad um, degree. And I said I wanted to work for it. So I taught for a little bit. Uh, I was a math teacher, fun fact. Okay. I think many students know that. So if you need a little bit of help with math, I can do a little bit of something. Um, a little bit. Just, just a little bit, okay. you know. But I was a math teacher, and then I wanted to go into the profession full time. Gotcha. So I uh, began working with federally funded TRIO programs, started specializing, helping students who may have had uh, different diagnoses, uh, academic support needs. And it has just kind of continued at Central. And so... You know, I've been blessed to be able to kind of grow within my role, you know, mm -hmm. starting as the director for student accessibility services yeah. and only overseeing, um, you know, uh, accessibility services. And then now overseeing first generation student success, uh, our two TRIO upward bound programs helping our high school students. Okay. And then also our TRIO student access program. So. My question for you is, what are some budgeting tips you would give to college students? Oh, yes. OK, so number one, I would say if you are a freshman, do not get a credit card. <laughs> why? OK, why you say that? Because I got a credit card as soon as I turn yes. 18. So, so why we'll say, would you say I that? I would say this. So unless you are unless you are a responsible freshman, we'll say okay. that. OK, right? fair, fair, um, fair. One of the things that happened to me during my freshman year of college is I got a credit card. And so coming not coming from much money. Right. Yeah. Not having had that experience. I didn't have any budgeting experience. I maxed out my credit card my very first semester. What? And I was eating ramen at the end <laughs> of the semester, holding on, you know, just trying to make sure I got to Christmas break. OK. Um, and so, you know, I would say, you know, if you if you are not financially responsible and you know yourself by now, you know what I'm saying? Don't get that credit card freshman year. Yeah. But to save, you know, so every little bit of money you get, if you get a refund check, I encourage you to put something to the side. It doesn't have to be your whole refund check, but okay. at least, you know, a couple twenties there, a couple hundreds there. Okay. And before you know it, you can do some amazing stuff. Like I bought my first car while I was in college. Oh, look at you. I put some money to the side. My mom said, hey, I'll match this. And I was able to go ahead and purchase my first car my junior year of college. So, you know, I definitely, definitely, definitely encourage you all to, to kind of save a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I would also say utilize your resources. There are so many community resources that are here to help you all gotcha. with managing finances, including even our office. You know, we're, we host uh, financial literacy workshops all the time, all budgeting, the time, yeah. savings, investing, you know, all of those kind of things. And think about the thing at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes, you know, people tell you, follow your heart, do this. Oh, it's just $5. It's just $10. But the Starbucks add up. They do. It add up. They no, do. For real. And Once, those Ubers, too. Exactly. Exactly. No, literally, guys, I tell you, no, like last year. So um, last year, I decided I was going to take an Uber to work sometimes, stuff like that. Right. Okay. I did it for like a full month. I measured how much money I ended up spending. I spent eight hundred dollars for that month on Uber alone. Eight hundred dollars. Getting that's to almost half work. my rent. Exactly. It was. It was. I was like, I might as well just go ahead and get a car. Yeah. yeah. So you know, cause you know, you just want to make sure you're making financially responsible. That's decisions. crazy. Okay. So I definitely, definitely, definitely encourage you to watch that. Uber. 
Um, can you talk about you know the trio program uh, yes, here at NCCU? How can it benefit uh, first gen students? Yes, yes, yes. So, a little bit of context: we have five trio programs here at NCCU. Yeah, we have the Trio Student Support Services Program okay. located in University College under the direction of uh, Miss Colleen Scott. Mm -hmm. We have the Trio Ronald D. McNair Scholars Program uh, located in Division of Student Affairs under the leadership of Dr. Drew Johnson. And then we have the TRIO Student Access Program located within Student Access and Success Programs, uh, my unit, um, and I serve as the director for that, as mm -hmm. well as our two TRIO Upper Bound programs. And all of these programs, specifically the three college programs, the first three I named, all give out scholarship money. Yep. All give out uh, free opportunities. For example, we're about to take 20 students to Miami. Can't for wait. Spring break. Yeah, that's going to be great. Graduate schools. Uh, we're going to do some different workshops, different things and stuff like that. We've taken students to Atlanta on trips last year. Yep. You know, got a chance to go um, and just do a lot of exploration. And so it's for us, our trio programs are really about exposure, right? Yeah. Giving students opportunities to kind of see the world, see different things. We're always uh, taking, you know, opportunities to try to see where we can take students. Gotcha. Um, and just expose them to different things. Um, I took my first plane ride when, because again, I come from low income home. That's right. So I took my first plane ride in my sophomore or junior year of college. I had uh -huh. never been on a plane before. And it was because of the McNair Scholars Program. I was a wow. the McNair Scholars Program when I was in college. Wow. And so I took my first plane ride. So, you know, we are, we're all about exposure and, and allowing students to basically see things that they may not have seen. Uh, I know when our students went to um, Atlanta and last year, they yeah. got a chance to go to, uh, I can't even think of the name of the restaurant, but it was uh, it was in Atlanta and mm -hmm. it had the sky top and it was just a floating, uh, ho uh, not hotel, but uh, restaurant and just kind of seeing the different exposures and experiences and getting dressed up nice and, you know, just really, you know, enjoying yourself. Wow. Uh, okay, uh, you're a four, like you mentioned that you were a TRIO program mm -hmm. uh, scholar alum. You're a four-time TRIO alum. Uh, does yes. that, does being a, an alumni make your job a little, a little easier because you know what we're going through? Definitely. Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. How, can you talk about that? How, how does your, how does that translate to your job yeah. today? No, I, and honestly, it's the reason why I do why I do my job. Gotcha. You know, because I wanted to, for my career, I wanted to work with students that I had similar backgrounds to, right? Gotcha. And kind of helping students kind of navigate college and just life in general. Um, it's crazy. I was writing letters of recommendations last night for some students that I had worked with like a few years ago and different things and stuff of that nature. So, you know, this isn't a, I just see you today and I'm done with you. This is like, hey, I'm committed to working with you. You're stuck. We're stuck with you. Yeah, basically, yeah. you know, I can't tell you how many students students have my cell phone number personal cell phone number work cell phone number you know you name it but it's all about helping students kind of get the support that they need to, gotcha. to, to work through and having been an alum myself I kind of can see some of the stories even if my story is not the, the exact same right mm -hmm. I can kind of relate to our students and say hey you know I understand I had to drop a class once in college you know gotcha. it happens you know I had to I had a failing grade before you're like oh that ain't what I was looking for but it happens right yeah. and so kind of just that empathy of kind of you know working with students and letting them know that you may face challenges in college you may face challenges personally yeah but it's okay you're going to get through it could you tell us where we could go to receive um services for the trio program and mental health assistance yes yes yes, yes. okay so our trio programs are located in about three or four different spaces <laughs> um, <laughs> but <It is. laughs> we are right uh, so if you're looking for the trio student support services program you're going to go to university college over in the alexander dunn building if you're looking for the trio run living their scholars program you're going to go to the ground floor of andy day shepherd uh residential hall if you're looking for the trio student access program you're going to go to the william jones building uh that's where miss b and mr williams are located some great resources uh miss brielle mccadden miss b she's been on the show yep. yes she's yes yes she's super yep. awesome yes. Um, and then the Trio Upper Bound programs are located in the bottom floor of the Student Services Building. Gotcha. Um, but each of those programs, again, all are doing different things, all have tons of resources, um, all will help students find resources. Okay. You know, and even when it comes to mental health, you know, we host workshops, we partner with the Counseling Center a lot as well, too, and they're such a great resource. Um, so I definitely, definitely, definitely encourage you to get on the Counselor Center's uh, books <laughs> if you're if you haven't gotcha and um, a side note to the to mental health is mm -hmm. talking about accommodations right because sometimes students don't know that they can receive accommodations if they are maybe having um, different things happen mentally 
You know, wow. Uh, one of the highest diagnoses on campus here at Central is ADHD, right? Oh, and so a lot I'm of our students them, yeah. don't know that, right? And it's considered a quote unquote invisible diagnosis or invisible disability. So you wouldn't know that someone has ADHD just by seeing them, right? But what we find is that um, when we tell students that, hey, there are accommodations if you suffer from severe anxiety. There are accommodations if you suffer from chronic depression. You know, they're more likely to come out and ask those questions and kind of get that support that might be available. Um, you're all, you're not just an educator and a, and a, a person in higher ed. You're also an entrepreneur. You co-founded yes. <laughs> a bi biological science uh, conference called I Dig Trio, correct? Yes. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind that? Yeah, it's so crazy. So I was walking back from a workshop with a colleague at the University of Florida, and she was telling me that she worked in biological sciences. Um, and I said, oh, wow. She said, you know, we specifically want to recruit, recruit diverse talent, first gotcha. generation, low income, underrepresented students. And I said, oh, I have plenty of them, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it was like, oh, maybe we can just host a workshop together where, you know, my students get a chance to learn more about your program and stuff like that. Then it became, well, mate, how about we turn this into like a day conference? Then it was a, how can we turn this into a two-day conference? And it just kind of grew and expanded. And now it's an international conference. Oh, look at last, great. Yeah, we have people who are uh, from like Australia, New Zealand, places like that, logging in to participate in the conference. Wow. And learn all about biological sciences. Um, I also do, you know, speaking and different things like that to encourage the youth, young adults. Gotcha. Uh, trainings with um leadership teams and uh, different uh, universities and different things and stuff like that yeah. uh, when I'm able to you know it's not on my it's <laughs> not a that I'm doing all day you know during my week but you know when I'm able to I'll do different things like that to support okay. um, other individuals out there but yeah that was definitely something that you know you, you just start with an idea and you're like man that actually turned into something that is a lot bigger than you and it, you even expected it to so uh, okay so you, you just uh, said that you used to work at University of Florida your mm -hmm. alma mater and now, Gators. Work, go, go <laughs> Gators, and you now you work at Central. Mm -hmm. And you, University of Florida is a PWI, and, yes. and NCCU is a HBCU. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the differences of culture oh, when it yes. comes to HBCU and PWI when it comes to working working at those institutions? Oh, yes, it is. Hands down. I always tell people, and this is one of the things when I talk to, even when I talk to students and we're recruiting and different things and stuff of that nature, but it's something special. Love my alma mater. Yeah. Uh, did a lot for me. Gave me a full ride, stuff like that. But it's something about our HBCU culture where I can walk out of my office door, hit a head nod with a student or hit a head nod with a faculty or staff. And it's just that un unspoken understanding. Yes. Right? Okay. It's like I recognize you. You recognize me. Yeah. You know, it's something special about that. And that's just something you don't get every day at a PWI. You don't get that at a, you know, uh, a private, sometimes at private schools that may not be, um, you know, uh, uh, HBCUs or, you know, different things and stuff like that. It's just a whole different kind of experience. And then, of course, the, the, the culture. I cannot tell you what my first experience was like going to a central homecoming <laughs> and having gone to my homecoming. And I, I walked in on Fried Chicken Wednesday in the uh, in the cafe. And I said, yes. wait, what? What is this? You know, yeah. <laughs> so the next year I had to come back in my suit because I had to yes, be ready. You know, I just didn't know how, how I was going to shake down. So, you know, it was kind of like that, 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 uh, that awesome experience. And both of my sisters, so I went to University of Florida, but both of my sisters went to FAMU. Okay. So they had this HBCU experience, lived it, loved it. Gotcha. Um, and I, I had even worked for, I worked for uh, PWI, I uh, worked for a public, uh, oh, a private university before Jacksonville University, and I also worked for the community college level. So I had okay. kind of seen these various levels of colleges, but I had never worked for an HBCU. Ah. And so when I got to Central, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, and before you know it, it kind of started to feel like home. Mm. Um, and it's something about even the way that our campus is set up, you know, yes, we're at Sloping Hills and Verdant Greens, <laughs> but I like how, you know, I can get to places sometimes even a lot quicker. You know, being at the University of Florida, I'd be walking a good 20, 30 minutes sometimes if I'm trying to get from, you know, this side of campus to get to the rec center or gotcha. something like that. You're about to put in a little hike, you know, or you're going to take the bus and, you know, you could do that. But, you know, so all those little things like that, definitely you're interested. And this is, again, no sight to my my alma mater because I love them. But yeah. I remember when I was in college, I want to say it was my junior or second, my sophomore, junior year, our homecoming fell in the same weekend as FAMU homecoming. Oh and a lot of our students God. went to FAMU for the homecoming. So we had a good time. Yeah. Shout out to FAMU. Uh, you know, <laughs> had a great time. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Uh, but we definitely, yeah, we skipped out on homecoming that year. We gotcha. like, yeah, we'll catch out next year, UF. Uh, yep. <laughs> so... Yes. Definitely that culture piece is super awesome. No, I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Murray, first of all, before I let you go, mm -hmm. where where what is what do you think what is next for this program? What will you guys got have coming up for 
students, especially a first yeah. a first gen and put people with disabilities. What do you guys have next and what services do you guys have for us? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So uh, if most people don't know, too, is that we provide scholarships. So each year we're giving out like forty five thousand dollars in scholarships to students. So uh, we're processing scholarships right now. That's item number one. Uh, two, uh, in April, we actually have a conference. It's called the TRIO Student Access and Success Conference. where We bring in TRIO students from all over the nation. We have people coming from like Oklahoma wow. and Kentucky and Mississippi and New York and all these different places. So they get a chance to come out. Uh, that's going to take place April 4th through the 6th. We are also wrapping up auditions today. This, today is the last day of auditions gotcha. for the talent show that's taking place during that conference. And the winner gets $1,000. And hopefully I could be a host for that as well. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So Shamai's going to be one of our hosts for okay. that as well. Oh, good. He's made it popular. <laughs> one of the hosts. Yes. <laughs> and so um, it's going to be a cool, awesome experience. They've been running auditions for the past three days. Okay. If you do want to submit a video audition, you do have until 11.59 p.m. Tonight. Tonight, mm-hmm. it has to be sent to firstgen at nccu.edu. So, F-I-R-S-T-G-E-N at nccu.edu. You get your video in. You can be considered for that. Again, the winner is getting $1,000. Uh, we've had some awesome auditions. I was looking at them. I was talking to my wife about it. She was like, man, y'all having a BET Awards. And I was like, it, it just might be. Listen, it just might be better. Listen, you know? Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's, it's, it's televised and hopefully it's G-rated. Not right. Because the BET Awards nowadays is right. Oh, yeah. Really we're going to be, yeah. be real G-rated. Yeah, we, yes. we have... <laughs> We have ninth graders through uh, collegiate. Oh um, lord! That, I, be I thought this was just college. This is everybody. Yeah. So we'll oh, have this is going to be great. I can't yes. wait to get into this. So it's going to be super fun. Uh, they're working on a glow party for them. All that kind of stuff. Food. Uh, food, yeah. of course, free food. Well, I'll all have my own dressing room. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got that piece set up, yeah. and then uh, in the summer we do a few summer programs. Then so okay. incoming freshmen we do like a summer program for them, as well as for our college students we do something called the Summer Leadership Academy. Gotcha. So three weeks of virtual workshops. You literally log in one day a week, uh, either a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. You mm. attend that workshop for three weeks, okay. and then we give out scholarship money after that as well too. So tons of money opportunities. Uh, we're you know about to get ready to rewrite some of our current grants, write some more grants. So yeah, that's that's the season right now. And uh, we just I just hope that you all have listened and, and learned something and, and just stop by. You know, if there's questions that y'all have, you know, if you're navigating the college experience, you just want to you know talk. Feel free to stop by and see us. I'm in Student Services G18. So. Yes, thank you, thank you so much for coming on, Mr. Murray. I really for, for future Dr. Murray. He's in Come his, on, getting right. his doctorate on the so way to be the doctor. Yes. <laughs> so, major props to you. Thank you so much for coming on. It's what's up with Shemai Cook. Up next is the hot question of the day. You're listening to what's hot on NCCU Audio. It is What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my guest co-host Ken LaVinci in the building, the one and only. How you doing? All the way from Baltimore. Shamai, <laughs> <laughs> so I play too many games, yo. <laughs> All right, let's get into the hot question of the day. It's time for the hot question of the day. So recently I put a poll out on my Instagram at Shamai Cook TV, as I do every show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I put a question out. Uh... It was a really good question. Over 250 people voted. Would you Do you prefer a private relationship or a public relationship? That is the question, and I want to get everybody's take on this. And we got a caller in line. Hello, who's this? This is Janae. Hi, Janae. How you doing? Well, uh, what's your take on this? Uh, do you prefer a public or a private relationship? Um, I don't say private. Why do you say that? Because it's just like it could. I don't like people in my business, so I'm gonna say private. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Janae, thank you for calling. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So according to the poll, over uh, like I said, over two hundred and fifty people voted. Eighty-one percent say private, and nineteen percent say public. What's your take on this, uh, Kendall? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry y'all. It's okay But um, my take on this I'm going to be honest uh-huh. I'm very like Besides social media I feel like private of course Because everybody does not need to know What goes on in your relationship yeah. But by private I don't mean like Oh we're like a secret Like yeah. I should be able to post you On my page and say Oh Merry Christmas from me and my man And it shouldn't be a problem Yeah we got a caller on line Hello who's this 
This is uh, Joey all the way from D.C., man. How's it going? How you doing, miss? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I'm calling in to, to see what's going on here on this podcast live. This is yeah, this is, this is this is a radio show. But thank you for calling. What's uh, <laughs> what's your take on this? Do you prefer a public or uh, or a public relationship or a private relationship, kind sir? I mean, everything that you know goes on in like my love life doesn't have to be public. You know what I'm saying, kind sir? You know because. As soon as I stop messing with the girl, man, then they're asking what happened to Erica, you know, and then Erica. too many questions, you know, I'm only one guy, you know, Who is and it? I feel like private is more efficient to like really build and focus on your significant other, you know what I'm saying, kind okay. sir, okay. and uh, I think it's better to like really build and have a legitimate relationship when you're private because public now you're going to put on a facade for the media and other individuals. Okay. 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 Did you? Did you? Uh. So you. You're saying you prefer a, a private one, though. That is correct, kind sir. Okay. Thanks for calling in all the way from DC. No I appreciate problem. it. Y'all take care, man. You too. God bless you. Amen. All right. Uh, what's the more of the story, Kendall? More of the story is keep your relationship business to yourself, but you better post that man and that girl. Mm. I, I, I'm trying to be like a relationship like Jay Z. Because when it Jay Z and Beyonce, because mm-hmm. we know they're public with their relationship, but we don't know what happens behind closed doors. I feel like because we have behind closed doors should not be publicized. Like the Cardi B and the Cardi B and Offset, that should not be publicized. And no. in, in the um, when it comes to you brought brought it up earlier um, in the show behind when we were off air, mm-hmm. um, you were talking about Summer Walker and um, Lil Meech. Yeah, Lil Meech. I, I feel. I feel like like those type of things should be publicized. It should never come. it should never get to a point where you feel the need to get on social media and type an entire paragraphs to your followers about what happened in your relationship. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's the moral of the story for me. Mm-hmm. Just be peaceful. Yeah. Just be peaceful. Like it's it's okay to post people. Let your business be your business, but exactly. you can share happy memories, happy moments, exactly. but you don't gotta do too much talk. Not too much. Pictures can tell a story. For, oh a picture's just worth a thousand words. And that is my ministry. That's your <laughs> up top. Up top. <laughs> it's much more what's up with Shamai Cook after the break. We will be right back. It's what's up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my special guest co-host, Ken LaVinci, in the building. What's going on, Kendall? How you doing? What's good? He was good. I'm feeling good. Thank you so much for joining me on today. You know, I, I wanted to give a shout out to you, Faith, Jaden, everybody for, you know, you guys been a really big people in my corner since i've been doing this show so i really really uh, really grateful for you guys so uh major props to y'all appreciate you for having us no no problem no problem (laughs) (laughs) all right we'll be right back uh up next is my uh quote of the day and more it's what's hot with shamai cook that was SZA, Kill Bill, right here at NCC Audio Net. It's What's Up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. Got my guest co-host, Ken LaVinci, in the building. Kendall, I had such a great time for, with you for the third time. Yes. And, you know, I'm glad you liked your little intro that I made. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm really grateful for you coming. And hopefully you come back before I leave again. Yes, of course. Yes. All right, it's time for my quote of the day so we can get out of here. The deeper you heal, the higher you raise the bar to who has access to you. Mm. That's the quote. That's a vibe. I love you for listening. It's what's up with Shamaya Cook. See you guys next week.